Hello, my name is Jordi Izzard. I'm Senior Associate Director of SICE Alumni Relations, and today's date is January 27th, 2016. And I have the pleasure today of being here with Carla Freeman, who graduated from SICE with her master's in 1990, and then later received her PhD in 1999. And thanks so much for taking the time. Um, why don't we just go ahead and we're gonna have a little bit of a conversation and just start with what originally brought you to SICE. I uh, am very happy to chat about my time at SICE, and it's wonderful to be here at SICE, uh, in SICE's China Studies program, talking about my uh, time as a student here, because I was also a student in China Studies at SICE, and I got excited about SICE's China program, having uh, spent several years in, in China, uh, while my, my father, who's a diplomat, uh, was assigned to the embassy there. And it was the early 1980s, uh, and China was changing very rapidly. And anyone who spent time there got very excited about watching this new society sort of emerge from uh, several decades of, of, uh, of isolation, at least from the United States. So I uh, looked around for the best China Studies program I could find uh, when I uh, finished college and had worked uh, briefly in the China field. Uh, and the one that uh, I, everyone recommended to me was, uh, was SICE's China program. I was familiar with uh, the director of the program uh, at that time, uh, Dope Barnett, who uh, really was one of the leading voices. Uh, he spoke out uh, even during uh, the, cold, the height of the Cold War on behalf of, of improving uh, relations with China. And, uh, he, uh, he himself had, had uh, uh, grown up in China, had been a reporter in China, and had an amazing grasp of, of, of the march of history uh, from the uh, 1930s, uh, really all the way through, uh, through the, the, the 1980s, uh, which is when I, I had the chance to study with him here. So I, anyway, I, I applied to, to, to SICE with, with some background uh, uh, in China, having lived there and also studied as an undergraduate uh, a little bit about China but uh, came here and jumped right into an incredible experience uh, working uh, under Doak Barnett and uh, at that point quite a small group of students uh, to learn about contemporary China and some of the changes that I had witnessed. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit about your experience being um, an MA student and mm -hmm. then even um, going into your PhD experience. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, uh, again, it was a, a fairly small group. In those days, the Japan Studies Program within the Asian Studies Program was the was the big program uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there were uh, there was a kind of intrepid relatively small group of us uh, studying studying China uh, many of the people I, I the students that I, I studied with are now uh, playing uh, leading roles in the in the China field uh, we um, we again we became quite a close-knit group because it was a fairly small group uh, there were uh, I think um, just about eight eight classes on China offered within the program. So uh, now we offer uh, tw almost twice that many, or maybe more than twice that many in any given given year. So it, it, uh, we, we all worked, uh, we all studied together and mm -hmm. uh, learned, learned the language together as well. Uh, and, uh, and, and so it was, uh, it was a, a really, uh, really wonderful uh, experience as a member of this uh, China studies community here. Mm -hmm. And what was going on in the world at that time? Well, it was an, an incredible time to study China. Uh, first, we had had, a, China had really had an, 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 a, 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 a political awakening uh, where alongside uh, a, the liberal, liberalization of China's economy in the, in the early 1980s, uh, there was also uh, an excitement in China about uh, China's political change, about China, about political development and and political change, and around the world there were uh, the beginnings of of, of uh, democratization movements, uh, and so even in that even uh, affected China and the the mood in China, uh, and by the late 1980s there was a real debate about the direction of political change in China as well as whether China would be able to sustain its it, the economic reforms that at that point had been ongoing for about a decade. Uh, while I was a student here, of course, the Tiananmen Square 
incident occurred. Uh, mm -hmm. I had been, I had a chance to go to China with great regularity up until that that point with a, an, an interruption for some family reasons. But uh, that really, uh, after after Tiananmen, which took uh, place in June 4th, on June 4th, 1989, I didn't go to China for a couple of years. Um, I miss the the early 1990s. Uh, that that disrupted our relationship, the, the U.S. relationship with China, and so uh, during my second year in SICE, the big debate was how should we manage our relationship with China? How do we go forward from here? So it was a very stimulating time mm -hmm. to work on these issues. And of course, at that time, we also saw the the the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, so it was a very, very exciting time to be watching uh, international politics from, from SICE. That's terrific. And tell us a little bit when you graduated. Well, there was the graduation in 90, mm -hmm. and then there was the sort of culmination with, the, with your receiving your Ph.D. Mm -hmm. in 99. Yeah. Tell us kind of how your career um, uh, launched from there. Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, I graduated in 90 uh, having already started working part-time as a risk analyst and I kept doing that for a small firm in here in DC around the corner that had regularly hired SICE students. I was the uh, the principal analyst for Asia so I covered not just uh, China which was uh, a big task. The The focus was really on on, uh, on political and economic risk with uh, the goal of advising uh, companies, often very large companies, uh, who were making investment decisions in these different countries. So I used my economic and, and uh, background, uh, thanks to our international economics requirements, uh, along with my, my regional and area studies background at SICE, to do this work, again, focusing on China. Uh, the countries that I, call, I covered were um, Vietnam, uh, South Korea, uh, and uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, I also uh, worked on Taiwan and uh, and Hong Kong, as, as well as uh, sometimes other countries in the region if if uh, there was a need. So it was it was a great way to to uh, to draw on all of the all of the things I'd learned at SICE. I did that for about four years. Uh, my uh, husband's job took me to the Midwest, and so I have had a kind of an unconventional SICE career in that. Uh, once I got to Wisconsin, uh, I started working for a foundation. At that time, it actually had a very uh, a dynamic international program. Uh, it, 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 it offered retreats on many uh, key emerging policy issues. So I, was, I, I took over the China portfolio there, but also the civil society portfolio. So I worked on, on uh, community development, civil society, and, uh, and international programs for the Johnson Foundation. Uh, the, the conference center uh, is best known as Wing Spread. So I worked on these Wing Spread conferences and other programs for what was in effect an operating foundation, a sort of, we called it a do tank, mm -hmm. uh, through, the, through the time I was, uh, throughout the time I was a PhD student. And then uh, I finally completed my PhD. Had, I had to resign from my job to, to, to finish that up. Uh, and then in, in 1999, started teaching at, for mm -hmm. a small uh, liberal arts uh, college. Where, where I, was that? That's also in Wisconsin. I headed their mm -hmm. uh, international studies program mm -hmm. and built a, a program, built also their China program there. And, uh, and then after that, I came here to SICE. So How lucky I, are we? I, I, yes. Well, I've been so fortunate. Uh, I, I went from working with some top uh, uh, China experts in, in Doak Barnett and uh, Alice Miller, who was uh, teaching here uh, when I was a student and who advised me on my PhD, to then uh, having the chance to work with uh, David Lampton uh, mm -hmm. here in our program. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Yeah. And. In thinking back a little bit about being a student mm -hmm. and kind of how your career has transpired mm -hmm. and is still going full force, mm -hmm. what advice might you have for mm -hmm. a current SCI student mm -hmm. today, be it somebody in D.C., HNC, or in, in SCI mm -hmm. Europe? Well, in some ways, even though uh, now it's been a long time since I was a, a master's student, and, and I'm, I'm really speaking here about uh, master's students since they're they're, uh, they're the majority of our, our graduates. Um, I think, uh, in, in some ways, my, my own uh, career is uh, 
is a, a, a very contemporary one in that I had to keep reinvent myself a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I think that is very uh, true of the career paths our students can expect. And the wonderful thing is that I, the, the diverse array of, of skills that students acquire here at SICE, not only um, their background in international economics, uh, regional and functional studies, but also the language skills that they have can really enable them to, to do that, to, to, to uh, function successfully in a, in a variety of different uh, different uh, professional environments and so they can really move with the times and also find opportunities wherever their 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 life adventures take them that's terrific well thank you so much for your time today and thank you for all you do to uh, help slice in the world <laughs>